गुड मॉर्निंग दियर सिस्टर्स एंड ब्रदर्स वेलकम टू डे ब्रेक एवरी मॉर्निंग इज अ गिफ्ट फ्रॉम गॉड साम हंड्रेड वर्स टू सेज वर्शिप द लॉर्ड विद ग्लैडनेस कम बिफोर हिम विद जॉयफुल सॉन्ग लेट एस नाउ ज्वाइन द क्वायर इन सिंगिंग एंड थैंकिंग आर लॉर्ड this praise and worship has really drawn you closer to god dear sisters and brothers when we look around us there are certain events and life of people that teach us various values that we can imbibe in our lives let us look at one such anecdote a young christian man who had established himself well in the field of business was once interviewed by a journalist and asked whether he had any particular formula for his quick success the businessman who was a very faithful christian replied i attribute all my success to my god from my childhood i have always experienced that god is leading me and i've always held on to one particular formula and the formula is this where god is in charge small things grow large and in god's hands small gifts expand yes as a christian when we entrust our small things our little efforts to the hands of god great things happen in our life when we allow god to be in charge of things large things happen in our christian life the gospel of luke chapter 13 verse 18 to 21 jesus gives us two examples 
examples of two little things which become great and effective by its nature. One is the example of the mustard seed and the second is the example of the yeast. Jesus tells in the Gospel of Luke chapter 13 verse 18 to 20. What is the kingdom of God like? It can be compared to a man who took a mustard seed and planted in the garden. When it is fully grown, it becomes a great bush and birds of the sky dwell in the bushes. Well, our life as a Christian may sometimes seem to be very insignificant. The actions that we do, the efforts that we contribute to the society may sometimes seem to be very meager, very small, just like the mustard seed and the yeast. But we begin to understand when we add a lot of love into it and when God is completely in charge of it, great things begin to happen. This is the beautiful story as we find and read through the pages of the Bible. The Old Testament we have the story of David who was standing before the mighty and the gigantic Goliath. He stood there having just five simple small stones in his hand. But his strength was not in these stones but his strength consisted of his trust and belief that God would protect and save him. And because of that power, David was able to overcome the gigantic problem of Goliath. Jeremiah, the young prophet who was called by God to be a prophet, gave himself completely to the Lord. And because of that, though he was a young prophet, he would become a mighty instrument in the hands of God. Yes, when God is in charge, great things happen. And when God's hands, mighty things happen and expand. Each one of us are expected to entrust our life with all our aspirations, with all our efforts to the mighty hands of God. And when we do that, we become a mighty force. The mustard seed and the yeast are beautiful examples of our day-to-day -day life which tell us how small things when entrusted to the hands of God become powerful influencers in the society. As Christians we may be a minority, we may be a small number but each one of us by our life especially our life of trust in God can make a big difference in this society. Today, let us take time as well as make decisions in order to take our life totally into the control of God and thus allow God to be completely in charge of our life. May the name of the Lord be ever praised. Live Jesus. I'm sure that the anecdote that you have listened has given you new lessons to follow. Let's put them in our practice. Saints were common people who became extraordinary by the extraordinary longing to lead a holy life. Catholic Church has several saints. Let's see the saint of today. In less than 40 years, Gianna Beretta Mola became a pediatric physician, a wife, a mother, and a saint. She was born in Magenta near Milano, the 10th of Alberto and Maria Beretta's 13 children. An active member of the St. Vincent de Paul Society and a leader in the Catholic Action Movement, Gianna also enjoyed skiing and mountain climbing. She earned degrees in medicine and surgery from the University of Pavia, eventually specializing in pediatrics. In 1952, Gianna opened a clinic in the small town of Messero, where she met engineer Pietro Molla. Shortly before their 1955 marriage, Gianna wrote to Pietro, Love is the most beautiful sentiment 
that the Lord has put into the soul of men and women. In the next four years, the Molas had three children, Peluigi, Mariolina and Laura. Two pregnancies following ended in miscarriage. Early in her sixth pregnancy, doctors discovered that Gianna had both a child and a tumor in her uterus. She allowed the surgeons to remove the tumor but not to perform the complete hysterectomy that they recommended, which would have killed the child. Seven months later, in April 1962, Gianna Emanuela Mola was born at the hospital in Monza, but post-operative complications resulted in an infection for her mother. The following week, Gianna Mola died at home in Messero, where she was buried. Gianna Emanuela went on to become a physician herself. Gianna Beretta Mola was beatified in 1994 and canonized 10 years later. Let us ask Saint Gianna for the grace to honor God and spread his love in all that we do. As we have heard the life of the saint, let's also resolve to follow the saint in leading the saintly life. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet. Yes, Lord, your word is the light that guides us. Your words are our spiritual food. Let's receive the nourishment through daily bread. Praise the Lord. Dear friends, welcome to the Daily Bread. Today is the second Sunday of Easter season. And for today's reading, we are given a gospel passage from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. First, let me read the passage, then reflect on it. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is the gospel of the Lord. My Lord and my God. Dear friends, that is the most perfect confession of faith presented in the Gospels. My Lord and my God. It is Thomas who makes this confession. Today is the Sunday after Easter. And this Sunday is uh, dedicated to the confession of Thomas, it would seem. We have a tendency to call Thomas the doubting Thomas, the Thomas who doubts the reality of the resurrection. A person who wants to believe only seeing and touching. What does it mean? What does the evangelist want to communicate this through this episode? Did Thomas really doubt about the reality of the resurrection or was something else? It is said that when Jesus appeared to the, the disciples, Thomas was not there. What happened to him? Had he gone for sightseeing? It is quite strange that this one particular person dares to get out and go when all the others are terrified, were afraid and sitting behind closed doors. Maybe Thomas was so courageous he went out to get some food for the other disciples, maybe. We do not know, but Thomas is spoken about in the Gospel of John three times. And every time he is an inquisitive person, a courageous person. When all the others were afraid to go to Jerusalem with Jesus, when Jesus said, our friend Lazarus is dead and I am going to wake him up. 
and they did not want to go because they were afraid that Jesus and themselves would be killed. It is the time when Thomas comes first to the scene, let us go to die with him. So he was ready to go and die. The second time Thomas appears asking the question, Master, we don't know where you are going, how are you going to know the way? And this apostle who was to come to India, the country that is always praying for the truth, Asadoma Sadgamaya, lead us from darkness to light, from death to immortality. And here Jesus is revealing himself to the question of Thomas as the way, I am the way, the life and the truth. And now the third time, Thomas is there when Jesus appears. But Thomas had made one condition, I will believe only if I see the wounds. I will believe only in a wounded saviour. Without the wounds, I won't uh, believe. So it's not a doubting, it is a resolution, a decision not to believe. And the moment Jesus appears to Thomas and shows him the wounds, he falls to the ground and says, my Lord and my God. This has two great implications. First, we should remember, John is writing the gospel in a time when the Domitian's persecution was raging. And Domitian, the emperor, had asked him, uh, had made an edict that he should be addressed as my Lord and my God. Here is a politically charged to say my Lord and my God. It is Jesus, not the emperor. And the second emphasis, insistence on the wounded savior. I will believe only in the one who is wounded. And that is the Thomistic experience, Thomas experience. Experience of Thomas in seeing Jesus the wounded. And later on, he would come to realize and he would come to teach us that today we see Jesus only in the wounded, the marginalized, the famished. That's what he had experienced later. And his experience was seeing the risen Lord with his wounds fresh. This is also a call. A call not to go after triumphalism. A, no, a call to go to the people who are wounded and in them find Jesus. I was hungry, you gave me food. I was in prison, you came to visit me. So this is the experience of Thomas and the today we are called to believe in Jesus and see him in his brothers and sisters who are wounded. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great revelation of the presence of, his, of your son with wounds still fresh. Enable us to recognize him in all the persons around us who carry the wounds of various wounds. Enable us to recognize his presence everywhere in every brother and sister. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Daily Bread has given you new insights to the words you have listened. Let the new insights enlighten us in our spiritual journey. St. Augustine says, A tongue that sings praise twice. As we are coming to the end of this episode, let us join with the choir once again to praise and thank our Lord. Set 
I'm sure the last half an hour has really been a blessing to you. Let's keep up the prayerful spirit. Until we meet again, God bless.